Oh, now you're doing the special music? Good, I won't read the name then. <laughs> Come on up. Yeah, because I was looking around. Thank you. Pam Grove called me Friday, and, and she's a little under the weather. She has a lot of trouble with allergies and sinuses, and as a lot of us do, I think. Um, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Before I get started, I'd like to thank uh, people that have been praying for me and my family. There's a long way to go, but things are looking up, getting better. The song I'm going to sing, if you're ever have trials, you face a mountain, you think it's a mountain, uh, just listen to the words of this song. a mountain, a trial of stone. Down in the valley I felt so alone, fearing that Satan would tempt and abuse. But God sent sweet comfort with this simple truth. Even the valley is higher ground. Satan can't touch me where God's love abounds. There's not a place where God's hand Good morning again. I know it's been a while since I've done an 11 o'clock message. But, um, how many of you remember the old deer hunting season joke? Really? <laughs> well, it was about three people hunting. Pastor Bob used to hunt, but he don't do it anymore. But it's like a pastor, a doctor, and a a lawyer, and they're all hunting, they all shoot at a deer, and uh, what do they call them, the like game warden comes out, 
because they all three said it was mine, mine, mine. Game warden said, let me check it out, and I can tell you whose it is. And he went and looked at it, and he said, that's the pastor's. He said, how can you tell? Because it went through one ear and out the other. <laughs> but it is a blessing. He's, I, he's communicated with me. Pastor Bob said uh, they should be back tomorrow or Tuesday. And it's all going good. And he said, and the weather's going to be good up here. So I don't know if that means what it's been like out there. <laughs> but it is a blessing to be here. And Paul this morning was a blessing. And, and Lord willing, I mean, he's just, he's on all of our hearts. Because, uh, you know what the message is about, Lord willing, is the world today. Like I can go First John chapter 2. And uh, as Brother Bob always says, we got a lot of scriptures, <laughs> but not that many. We'll go through what the Lord lays on our heart. And uh, but First John chapter two, and I'll read a few verses there. But let me uh, go in prayer again. Dear Lord and our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this Lord's day. We thank you for your Word. We thank you for salvation first and most of all, Lord, and we do repeat that if there be one amongst us that doesn't know you, that they'll come to know you today, that today be the day of salvation, Lord. And we do pray that we could do more work and do the proper things for you and get this country, this whole world, the way it is nowadays, Lord. We just wish they'd get back to doing the things the way the, the, your word says and, and things proper and that we could just do what we're supposed to, let our light shine. and. Just ask you to forgive us where we fail you, things we take for granted, and as I always say, even vengeance thoughts, because we're human, Lord. But again, we thank you for this church and for your word, and most of all for your son. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Yeah, 1 John uh, chapter 2, like uh, 15 through 17, and it's, like I said, and it just was laid on my heart when Paul started talking stuff this morning, and it's all about the way the world is nowadays. It's crazy to me. But love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And the world can become an, an absorbing type of interest, uh, main subject, living by worldly ways. As, as he said, a lot of people live by worldly ways because the government changes everything. They do all these things. But we need to stay and go with the word. Amen? And uh, But it does we don't want to go with just the word. 15, that verse 15, does make some of, uh, like me, it kind of like, because it talks about do not love the world. It makes you think of, uh, or someone told me this, so it makes you think of uh, John 3.16. But that's God loves the world, loved the world, and it's referring to God saving his love for all men. Amen? Amen. Saving for everybody to get saved. He died for us. Not the way the world is. And the way it's turned. But that's referring to God saving his love for us. Where verse John, as I said, 15 is more about setting our hearts on worldliness. And we're not to do that. As he spoke this morning too. We're not to do that. We're to try to do work for the Lord. John's main points here are about love for the world. In the verse it tells us incompatible love for the Father. You know, as, it, as you go on, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not with him. And the Father is God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. They're all one. Amen? Amen? And in any case of how we do this, this world, you know, the good news is, and as we talk about it, all that is in this is what? Is temporary. Like, okay, go to, you know, if you don't go to all the verses, that's fine. But like 2 Corinthians and I read these verses. Sometimes when I read scriptures, I'll read them. But 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. And that's the good thing about the world. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not are seen eternal. In other words, this world is going to go. Amen? I mean, it's, gonna, it's going to go. But uh, as he says, we're not to love the world 
his main points is not to get into the world. And we're supposed to love our Father, the God. And all that is in the world is temporary. So what do we need? Salvation. That's what we always pray for. Because you have that eternal hope in heaven. And it's not temporary. Everything in the world today is temporary. But salvation is what? Eternal. Permanent. And you can go by that. And that's why I read them verses. And go back to John. You probably did. But back to John. Verse 16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes... And the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And again, it's lust of the flesh. That kind of points to gratification of our fleshly desires, which means our desires, our pleasures, our lust, our emotional, etc., desires. And the feelings, as it says there, and of lust of the eyes, from our eyes, things we see. It'll give us things that maybe we want to do. Things you want, things you see, things you want to do, things that you think about. I mean, because we are human. You get them feelings, but we got to go. As he said, stay with the word and try to do the things for God. Amen? Do the right things. <clears throat> but it will give us, like it says, your eyes. It'll see things giving us a strong desire to want things or not. And the pride of life is also emptiness, isn't it, of doing the right thing for God. We're not to be prideful and stuff. We're letting our light shine. That's what we're to do. Let our light shine for our Savior. And these three points in these in this scripture are orig- are not original with God, are they? It's not to do the worldly things. The, if the world would have stayed with the Word, as as Paul said, if they wouldn't have changed so many things, it would be better. Amen. If they would have stayed with the way it's supposed to be, especially this country. But uh, we're to let our light shine for our Savior. And these points, I, don't, I believe, are not original, but the way we should do things. Like, go way back to Genesis. In the beginning, Genesis 3. Genesis 3, and I believe verse 6, but I'll, I'll read a few verses. <clears throat> Six is, and when the woman saw that the tree was good, you know, you know, most people know this, you're not supposed to do that, they weren't supposed to do things, but when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, things you see with your eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And seven, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they so sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And just go like to verse 12, because the Lord had told them, you know, they were supposed to listen with him. But verse 12, God talked to him and asked him, first he asked him why, what was this and that? But he goes, and the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to me with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. 13, and then the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. And then who's she talking about? The devil. Satan. I mean, the servant of God, a small g. And uh, those are likely worldly things nowadays. But as we read 2 Corinthians, it's all temporary. It's all temporary part-time, as I read them two verses. The things we see But the things we don't see is that eternal hope in heaven that we can look forward to. All of that is temporary, part-time, and on the way of being ruined. But verse 17, back to, and I flip right back to John, 1 John, because that was the main thing. 1 John chapter 2, 17 says, And the world passes away, as I said, it's temporary, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And there's that, tells us again, forever. That's that eternal hope. It lasts forever. The world and desires, pride, etc., of the world, all will pass away. We have, should have passion to do God's work, do God's will. We, you must be saved. That's always the main course, salvation. You must be saved. And only one way to do it, as, as Paul told us too. There is only one way through Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. And that's the only way to be saved. But 
world today is, is it not? It's like crazy is what I call it. You know, some people think I'm crazy too. But you try to do what the Lord wants. But the world's crazy, but it will be coming to an end. Like in 2 Corinthians 4. And I've probably read these to folks before. And I say, in time, you don't have to go to all the verses. I was teasing earlier, said if you you need a few pages. But 2 Corinthians 4, like 3 and 6. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, to them that aren't saved, that don't want to be saved. In verse 4, though, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. Ourselves, your servants for Jesus' sake. And verse 6, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But the main thing there, and I think we did a, pastor did a message a long time ago and brought that to our attention, to me anyways, it was God with a small g is who? The devil, Satan. And, and that's what it is. Many of us can do and can fail to respond to the right things and react properly in the world today and to let our light shine. It is hard. And I, I've told, I know I told you when I was up here before about how hard it is with a new job. But it, I don't know if I told you, but it was a blessing. One guy had been working where I'm at for like 30, 40 years. These people start talking about gay. This is okay, being gay and being that. And he goes, shut up. He says, if you're gay, you're happy. If you're not, you're, you're queer, you're lesbian, blah, blah, blah. And remember, pastor used to tell it, gay is happy. Not nowadays, as they changed everything, it's not just happy. People don't believe that. But if we go by the Bible, that's what gay means, happy. But the God of this world is there, and many of us can. But verse 4, Satan is the power of worldly things too. But... What's going to happen with that too? Temporary. As the whole world is to be temporary. And 5, verse 5 I read, we preach not to ourselves. We, we preach not about ourselves, not personal, but to let our light shine. To talk about the gospel and those who reject our gospel. Those who don't want to hear it. They don't want to. And as he said, like there is some churches where they go just for music different things. I went with Brother Bob or Brother Bob, Brother Paul to some of them churches where they didn't even have an invitation. You know, they, and he, he preached the word from King James. It was a blessing. But they didn't have invitation. They didn't do a lot of things. But yet they went to church. But many of us can do those things. But Satan is the power. That small G. And I was telling Deb, my wife, and I always tease her. She ain't here because I'm preaching. But but I told her sometimes, because everybody's computers nowadays, right? If you sometimes you punch in God with a small g, it'll come up with all kinds of things about God, not just about what God is with the small g. But Satan too, Lord willing, will be temporary. And five, like I said, we preach not about ourselves, not personal things. We let our light shine for God. And those who reject our gospel are refusing, not us, not pastors, not anything. They're refusing God, our Father. And we are to do our walk for God, our work for God. As verse 6 and 7 says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, shine in our hearts, to give the light of knowledge of glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have the treasure in the earthen vessels that, that excellently of the power may be of God and not of us. The power is of God. And I've always said that, if it wasn't of God... I know myself, I wouldn't even be here. Probably not even physically. I told you, Pastor and I, it's like broken record. I'll say Phil, though, but we used to talk, we would either be in, and they rhyme, jail or hell. One of jail or hell, one or the other, we would be there. But being saved, the, the world is crazy, but we got to try to do the right things and not preach about ourselves, as I said, about the Savior. Jesus, our Savior, God, our Father, we are to walk for Him. God is our Father. We receive powers. We receive blessings. All of our life is for Him. And I always tell you, too, I should memorize verses, and a lot of people do. But what's Matthew uh, 
5, 16. What's it tell us? It tells us, let your light so shine before men. And that means everybody, and you know that. And not just men, but all humans. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And that's again, as he's go by Lord's word, not by the country, the world, the way they do things now. The world now is more just about cash and money. And that's what I'm trying to, I try to witness people at work now. And you know what? A lot of them tell me why they don't go to church. Well, it's all about music and money. And I said, well, it depends on the church, as Paul said. It depends on the church you're going to. I said, it's all about salvation. And as I say, David, know many of us had old days where we've changed. And if we wouldn't, we wouldn't be around. The Lord, our Savior, is a blessing. And that eternal hope in heaven is definitely something to look forward to. Amen? Because we do not preach about ourselves, but our Father. As Matthew said, let our light shine. And I read a few verses, but I won't talk a whole lot more. Like I said, but Ephesians 6. Another member here that, that we miss be uh, Gary Scott. I remember he did a message about these. And I was glad, I was blessed that he got a young kid to come up and do it with him. Because he put hats on his head and different things to explain these verses. But I'm not going to go through them a whole lot. But Ephesians 6, it is about believers and what we should do and not go by the world. Again, <clears throat> verse 11 in Ephesians 6, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And again, that's the God with a small g. And for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And that evil day, that's the world today, isn't it? Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And a lot of these words in here, and it's a blessing that people do read the word and know it, because armor, wiles, deception of the devil. We need to show that we are surrounded with truth, with God's word. Like the breastplate, that is protection that God gives us. Protection from God for God of his righteousness. By being saved, we should honor God. It gives us strength, strength upon the truth of the gospel and to live for the Lord, or we wouldn't even be. Like verse 15, as I just read, it's like, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It's like having shoes. It's like having your feet prepared, having them right. That's what it is, having shoes on your feet, having the Lord in your heart, being prepared with the gospel of peace, receiving the promises, the rewards of God, living by God's word, trying to do the right thing instead of just going by the world. As I said, if, if, and Pastor says that too, if, if they stayed how they started setting this country up with everything and went by the world, and as Paul said, or went by the Bible, things wouldn't be as crazy as they are. But they don't. And verse 16 is, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Again, we know who that is. And mainly, and take the helmet of salvation. And that's why I said, when Brother Gary did that, he, he had a kid, he put a helmet on him, he did all kinds of things, just to explain it to him, and it was, it was a wonderful time. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the, of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And that's what we need to do, is do all that, and try to do that, because we've got the rewards to look forward to. The, like Matthew 28, 20. I never noticed, like the pastor says, you can really hear them pages turning now. Did I? 
Yeah. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. This is Jesus talking. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now, is there anybody in the world? Even we, I've told that before. We try to do that. I'd like to be with my wife, be with everybody till the end, but we can't. We're not, even we try to be faithful and stuff and do everything we can. We're not like the Lord. He is with us always. Amen? Amen. All the time. Not anything like the world. Not temporary. Not temporary at all. In 16 and 17, as I said, that I just read, there's things we need to do. But if you go back to 1 John, and I should have gave him this Bible to preach out of. See, it's falling apart. But that's a good thing. Because they use it. But go back to 1 John 5. And we're getting near the end there. It's the last page. But uh, 1 John 5 and verse 4. And there's a lot of them. And a lot of times I'll, you'll start reading a verse and you just want to read them all. Because they really it, speak to your heart. And makes you want to do the right things. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. As I said, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and you know that. They are all one. In verse 8, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, the blood, and these three agree in one. So they are all one. But you know, and it's just a blessing that Bob, or here I go again, but that Paul talked about the world too and things, how it's changed and everything. The world today definitely makes me think and believe that heaven sounds so much better now, so much more to look forward to. I mean, I'm thankful, like Pastor will tell us, every morning I wake up, I thank the Lord for another day. And another day with you guys, another day at work, another day, even on crazy days, you're blessed to have a day. But, I do look forward to that. I mean, because with the way things are going now, it makes me more so look forward to going to heaven. Like I uh, say, it's like a family reunion. The world today is just so crazy. The country is, but they're taking things from other countries and making it like this, ain't they? Trying to make our country like theirs. So let's go to, and some of you will know, some of the favorite verses, and then I'll close out. It is, 1 Thessalonians. And these are ones that I know I was like broken record, but I pray this every day because the old story of broken record bills, but if you're born twice, right, you may not die at all by these verses, but if you're born once, you'll have a physical death and you may have a second one, amen? But 1 Thessalonians 4, and these are very popular, and, and I love them, though, because, hey, maybe this happened. This could happen any time, as Pastor tells us. And I pray that it happens, because then we wouldn't have that physical death. But I also pray for all the lost ones to come to know Him, so they'd be with us, whether they're family, friends, neighbors, it doesn't matter. He died for all of us, amen? amen. All right, I'll read 13 through. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That's the ones that's passed on. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So if they're just going worldly, not by the word, not saved, they have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died, rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And as you know, he will bring the ones that passed away with them. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. And that just means they will come first. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 
But here, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I mean, that would be such a blessing. Like I said, we wouldn't have to go through the physical pain, the worldly pains, all the craziness that goes on. We would meet in the clouds, as it says. Meet in the clouds with the Lord and all the ones, the family, all the saved ones. It would be like a big family reunion. And the last one, wherefore comfort one another with these words. And that is the bottom line, as we always say, main course, salvation. You must accept Jesus to be your Savior. And then we have that eternal hope to look forward to, that, re that family reunion in heaven. And as I say, whether it's family, friends, people you just work with, you run into, neighbors, we just pray that all of them come to know. The Lord wants everybody to be saved. He died for all. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord and our Heavenly Father, we do thank you. We thank you for your word. Thank you for this church, for each and every member, each and teachers, deacons, trustee, pastor, his wife, just each and every one, Lord. And we do lift up all that don't know you, whether they be in the church, at home, neighbors, as I say, Lord, no matter where they be, we just lift them up to you. Pray that we can do the right thing. Let our light shine. Get this world, this country, to come back to the right things, to go by your word, and get people to come to know you before it's too late, Lord, because we do. Look forward to your return, Lord. We look forward to that. I look forward to all the ones that ain't saved to come and know you. And if there be one amongst us today, we just lift them up, Lord, and pray that they come up, accept you, come to know you, or even at home or wherever, just pray to you, speak to you, and get it done properly. One way of accepting in heaven is through you, through Jesus Christ. And we lift all those up to you. We do pray for Pastor. Pray for Jerry and the the missionary that's going today to the nursing home be with each and every one of them and we do thank you and praise you and give you all the honor in Jesus name we pray amen thanks brother Phil thank going to have everyone stand now for our invitation and turn to hymn number 124 hymn number 124 lead me to Calvary